Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art show event. And today we had a catastrophic failure in our previously planned, totally produced live stream. Well, the thing fell apart. We're not going to really be able to fix it until Tuesday. But I was like, John, John, mm -hmm. John, it's their Saturday class. It is. They, and I promised them a Saturday class every Saturday at 1 p.m., which I did kind of give you, but the whole thing fell apart. So what can we do? I'm like, you know, we're kind of unique. We're different than other people. We're different in a very particular way. How are we different? We're different in that we can go live anytime we want, and I can just make it up. So if you're feeling really particularly brave and you'd like to learn how to paint and you'd like that instruction to be step by step, but you also enjoy the slight excitement and anxiety of having no idea what you're going to paint, come along and paint with me right now. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to make something beautiful. I'll even be a little interactive with you guys. So you might get to contribute to the direction the painting is going to take. And that way you get your Saturday paint in. I think especially, woo, Inception. I think especially right now with everything that's going on in the world, it's important to make creative time. John's going to tweet everything out. So if you guys can find us again, we're going to give our live stream a take two, but this one is not previously painted. I have no plan. Here's what I know. I have quinacridone magenta. I have ultramarine blue and titanium white, and I'm going to start out. Now, some things I'd like to know from you guys, some things that I would find uh, very, very interesting is I'm going to do something imaginative. I'm probably going to do something fanciful, but I want to know, do you guys want it to be a... Uh, whimsical fanciful or do you guys kind of want it to be a melancholy fanciful hmm. Hmm. oh that was the gnomes arriving the gnomes just went out did we gnome people over this i did gnome people over this. so i'm going to start my background because that's going to be irrelevant to either way guys let me know whimsical or a little melancholy what mood do we want to paint today? I'm going to make it up. I'm going to take a, oh, look, it's another number 26, right? I'm going to go ahead and load this up with a good amount of white and start to paint my round surface. Now, something to know about um, these round surfaces is this is a Frederick's. These are economy. Um, they're very inexpensive. I found a place that frames for them. And if you check the community tab, they even have some cool interesting ideas of what we can do i see whimsical 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 i do see a melancholy out there too but it looks like whimsical's having it you'll have to let me know john you search through mm -hmm. while i'm painting this i'm gonna start with the lower half whether you're painting a traditional shape canvas or round like me start with your lower half kind of with a little bit of white that's where we're going to begin let's begin there shall we I'm going to rinse this out a bit just so I have control of pigmentation. All right. It looks like whimsical. Mm. People need their spirits lifted. I dropped my towel. That's, I need my towel yeah. lifted. I'll grab paper towels because you know what? I'm the Sherpa and I always have backups. So I'm going to take a little titch of my pink. And I'm going to go ahead and load this into my brush. And I'm going to come here and do a lower little pink field. So we're just coming across the surface, brushing back and forth. It's pink and white. It's just a traditional bright. This is just the start. We're just kind of thinking a thing in, and then I'm going to refine it with one of my cool cloud brushes. All right. Both in one painting. Actually, weirdly, I probably could do both in one painting. <laughs> But I do understand it. Sometimes the world is so bent a particular way that it's very hard. I'm taking my ultramarine blue. I picked ultramarine as the second color because the quinacridone makes such a lovely violet and mixes so well with the ultramarine that I was like, ah, oh, it doesn't really matter what we do. It'll come out okay. This first coat that I do on the surface really is just to get an initial coat of acrylic on here. With these cheaper canvas boards, if you can get that first coat, stick down sticky tape. <laughs> sticky tape doesn't want to stick for me. Let me get another dot out. It will let it take all the paint. So I've almost got like kind of a white stripe, pink stripe, and blue stripe. Mm. All I got. You have stripes. Oh, everybody says they need happy. So we're going to make something that's happy, something that's going to lift our spirits. Whenever you're still storytelling in art, um, everything, every color, every object, all the imagery 
it lends itself. I'm taking my uh, ultimate varnish brush and I'm going to kind of blend this out to begin with. Just softening this whole space, making sure that it's coated, but also kind of not too streaky, just a little bit softer because I will want to create something sort of romantic and optimistic and hopeful. Hopeful's nice, right? Yeah. A belief that there's a, a wonderful, optimistic magic to the world. Kind of a Studio Ghibli over Tim Burton, I guess, kind of a thing, right? Everything has a little bit of magic, though. I don't tend to get that dark often anymore. Because I find that when I turn on the dark tap, it's a flood. <laughs> so I don't like to turn that tap on. All right. Like the Bruce Banner of dark, dark gothy stuff. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't find its balance. So I'm rinsing out that brush and I'm going to pull that to the side. Thank you for always coming through Cinnamon John. This is such an exciting treat. It says rain. Uh... Mods, do you know where the attribution language is? Oh, yeah, it's in the description of the thing. Can I? Do you think I can blow dry without blowing out the circuit? Mm-hmm. I re-updated it. Yeah? Uh, well, there's only one way to find out. Let's see here. Okay, so it's still a little loud over here. So, uh, do, 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 do. So, generally speaking, um, if you're looking for attribution, my, meaning you're wanting to use our images or Cinnamon's image in some way, we have a licensing program. You can check out our website and for more information. And if you're just in general curious, you can reach out to support at theartsherpa.com and uh, we'll be able to help, help answer any of the questions you have there. Uh, and, you know, work that out. So... There's all sorts of stuff. Oh, yeah, I should tell you guys, don't use heat when drying your surface because that's what I always say. You're doing these Lazy Susans uh, and a canvas. I highly recommend doing some type of sticky dot to keep it from just flying off the round. So here we go. I've got kind of an idea of where I'm going. I've got, I'm going to put a little glazing liquid on here because who doesn't need a little glaze? Who doesn't? I got my luminous paints out too. I'm bringing it, I'm bringing it like, intently. I can always add a little of my glazing liquid in there so that it isn't drying out on me so quickly. This is an ultimate varnish, but basically what you guys need to know about this brush is it's a mop. <laughs> it's an oval mop. It's an oval mop with a super fancy name. And it's synthetic, which makes it very acrylic friendly. I am brushing, kind of playing with the shape of the canvas, the direction of what I want is a kind of like a story, uh, storytell kind of sky here. I love doing paintings where I don't really particularly have anything per se that I'm planning, but I let the painting find me. You know, I let the objects and the things within the painting kind of pull me in and then direct where we're going to go and then. Voila, suddenly you're just there. Making I'm adding paint. some pink. Hmm? You're painting. Well, sometimes when you paint from sort of your own stream of consciousness, some very important things will happen. Uh, one of the things is, is you'll start to get a sense of what you're currently working out in your own little brain. Because we're always sort of working things out, whether we realize it or not. I like to get a second brush out. When it's just me and I'm not too worried about you guys, I like to use two brushes. <laughs> but I realize at home you might be like, two brushes, what, what? Yeah, two brushes make blending just a little bit friendlier. And I create a little symmetry here on this dramatic space that I am working out. Coming back with a little dry, soft brush. You so know I what's really cool? a grip of these around. What's really cool, sir? When your eight-year-old daughter discovers that she has hard-soled shoes in a wooden-floored house. Oh, who is like a future tap dancer of all tappy taps? You know the one. 
uh, so uh, poor Vicky. Vicky's like, what happened to Lake Como? Lake Como sank. <laughs> it, it, a kraken happened. A kraken happened to Lake Como. Lake Como will be back on Tuesday. We figured out what it was going to take to fix it. And we were like, all right, we'll probably be live streaming Tuesday. But I didn't want anyone to miss their Saturday weekend paint. So I thought, I'm going to make something up. And because we can up, do that. And are. I guess we sent out a text. But only 220 people are interested in making something up. <laughs> <laughs> so I may not be all that that I think I am. Uh-oh. I don't care. I'm still going to paint. I think that once you uh, you had scheduled one thing and everyone like, well, I got stuff to do with my day. Yeah, they probably do. I don't. So <laughs> I don't have something to do with my day. Notice how I'm just coming along and I'm just touching this. And, and where I do that, there just starts to create a sense of sky. I love that about this type of freeform little sky where the sky happens for you. Always be open. Always be open uh, to the possibilities here. I really need that towel wherever that fell. Hmm. I can't get it. I'll get it. That's kind of what I'm hinting at. I'm using the backwards girl talk. No, no, I need the towel because the paper towels get so wet. And so it just fell under my feet. I just can't reach down and get to it. I'm not even sure you can, but I know I can't. Thank you, baby. I'm just adding another layer up here. This will be that cookie lesson. Nobody knew that they were going to get that special, special cookie. And then the people will be like, where'd you get that lesson? You're like, oh, you didn't come back. I'm going to use the corner. See how there's this corner of this brush? I'm going to use the corner to create some little fluffy, fluffy cloud shapes. They're maybe a little more defined in this space. Seeking out some light that you might have. And I, I love using the shape of the brush to help me kind of determine what is going on here. And again, we're going to do something that lifts our spirits and helps us, I don't know, see the world in a slightly more optimistic way. Grabbed a little glazy medium and it picked up some ultramarine, but I liked it. So I'm going to come back and do it again on purpose. So I like the thing where it was like, wizards don't make mistakes. They make unexpected possibilities. And I was like, ah, I don't make mistakes. I make unexpected possibilities. It's oh. kind of like a modern version of a happy accident. <laughs> there we go. Continue this down. And a thought is starting to occur to me here, and now I'm going to lean into it. Your artist brain, your artist brain is a very special place. I am working my titanium white, a little glazing liquid, and still my mop. In that, it, and the more you use, the more you have. It doesn't fatigue out. It's, it's always ready to go. Now, some things can happen that disconnect us from our artist brain in life. Sad things can happen. Life distractions, work can happen. But the brain is there, ready to be there for you as you need it, when you're ready for it. I am going to just grab this here and get a little bit of this more like, kind of like lavender. See how we're doing for these lower bits that just occurred to me we could do. I haven't even grabbed any zinc or a smaller brush. What? No zinc? I didn't. The controversy. I, I, I don't mean to start any controversy, sir. I don't mean to, but sometimes it just happens. What controversy? Uh, uh, the, the zincless one? <laughs> the zincless one. You know what, man? I don't know. These days, there could be controversy. So people are already starting to see uh, unexpected stuff showing up in this. I'm starting to see unexpected stuff showing up in this, and I'm just starting to love what it is. Oh, I'm loving this, guys. Loving it. Kind of like really wonderful, charming little piece just happened out of nowhere, didn't it? It did. Didn't it? It was a round cloud. It was a round what? It's a round cloud. It's a round cloud. <laughs> I'm going to get my number 12 Princeton. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. You know. I'm into my white here. This could be the view out the window of an airplane. It could be. 
or of a boat or portal. A portal of a boat. That is that is that your happy place is looking out the window of an airplane? I don't know. Just like I mean you should know where your happy place is, sweetheart. You're like, no, I don't want to think about that too much because <laughs> I have to do things about my life. Oh no, I know. I mean like probably the evening time after we're done and we're sitting down just watching T V together is probably my happy place. I really love that too. Just after I get to set everything down for the day. Mostly because it's that time of day where there's absolutely nothing else I could do and I'm absolutely out of energy, so the only thing I can do is cuddle, which is nice. So we just do that. Just do that. Oh, look at this, guys. This just came out of nowhere. It's wonderful, didn't it? So these brushes are great little cloud brushes. Um, they're great little blending brushes. They're great little tree brushes. They just do all the things super, super well. That is what they've got kind of going on. I'm loving this. And I have to decide where we go from here, but I have kind of an idea. I think it's important to keep a sense of childish wonder mm -hmm. in one's life. Optimism, if you can. Not always that easy, though, is it? Trying to create a little bank here that I like. You'll see me sometimes like, it needs a bank. Oh, how pretty is this? Doesn't that just say to you, hey, hey. Oh, I'm so glad for everyone who's decided to hang in and be here for us while we do this like unexpected paint along. Mm -hmm. I think this is really terrific. Hold on a second. I'm going to dry this. <sighs> okay. So it's still a little loud over here. Make a little loud request. <laughs> Make it quiet and kind of whisper inside them. I'm in a cave with you guys whispering away from the noisy, noisy hair dryer. Okay, so you guys know you can't use heat. That's bad. Don't use heat. I don't know why I'm whispering. Okay, so that seems crazy. But the uh, this is what we do on a day when we don't have any other plans is goof off and paint stuff. I know you can see, I kind of put a, like some sort of air wall. I'm sure she's, she has a good idea. So I've got to put like a wall because the noise here is just, I mean, that's a, that's very noisy. Just very, very noisy. Much noisier than it was earlier when I had a wall between us. Ah! It's even louder. Yeah. Very loud. I have to turn my back. I'll make it a little quieter. Point my microphone away. Quiet my microphone down. Be quiet, microphone. Don't make so much noise. It's too sensitive. I have to make my microphone. I have to. We gotta change this. This is what we learn on these crazy lives. Is that I don't have enough audio shielding in my booth. Well, I don't have a booth anymore. It's part of the problem. Okay, hold on a second. I just had a really cool idea. What do you have an idea of? Uh, you guys will have to go along with me to find out. Okay. It's the whole surprise. I... All right. So I'm going to use my chalk tool, and I want it to be a little drier and cooler than this. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my thinking. Um, so I want to tell a story that has a bit of a fairy tale element to it. I want it to be a little bit childlike and optimistic as if the world is a slightly magical place and also like by picking these soft colors and everything what I'm really doing is I'm I'm creating an environment which says hey this sky isn't a stormy sky it's the kind of sky you'd see in spring or when good things are happening and I really like how it came out but really it's almost like the sky is a landscape so it's trying to decide what to do within that so I had an idea haven't pre-sketched could go a bunch of different ways so we'll have to see if i can if i can handle it oh thank you sarah there, Sa oh sarah's like she's like i believe in you she says thank you for teaching me to paint oh you're so welcome sarah you blow some bubbles for sarah i will blow some bubbles for you sarah she gets bubbles oh maybe this needs bubbles does this need bubbles i think it needs bubbles it needs bubbles 
So this is going to have bubbles. That's a decision now. Ooh. Sarah, thanks to Sarah Stewart. Later when we're painting these, thanks to Sarah Stewart, there are bubbles. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to um, know where my main object is, so have to have to sort of think about how this is going to be. So when I'm doing a figure, but I'm not entirely sure where I've got my, where my figure is going to be at, it's an interesting sketch process for me. Cause I'm like, you know, where do I, where do I want them? And so I've got to figure out like where, where is that going to be tipped back? And I'm thinking about those things right now. John's helping me do so. Am I? Yes, you are, believe it or not. I feel like and I'm, I'm gonna have here. to get something round to bubble up. You know what I'm saying? You have look look all around you. You have all sorts of bubbles. Look, there's a round, there's a round. <laughs> I'm gonna need there's it. Rounds. I'm gonna need it. More tape. I'm gonna need it. So I'm gonna check my uh, bubble files. I have so oh, you need bubble reference? I got it. Okay. I got to get something in first. And then once I have that in, then I'm going to be golden. But I, I've got to, I got to figure this out because it's going to be crazy angle. Crazy angle. And I got to hope, I got to hope that I can, that I can work those things out and how I'm going to do that. So that's what the chalk is for. The chalk lets me kind of do this. And then if I ever need to change the chalk, I just, Go with a little bit of a damp brush and off it is. Off it goes into the off sky. Off it goes. Off it goes. I think I'm going to have to just be brave, guys. <gasps> you know what would be awesome on this? What? Kiki and her cat flying. Kiki, Kiki's delivery service. Just on the little witch on a broom. Little witch on a broom. This is, this is going to be almost that. This is going to be almost that. I'm going to have to kind of pre-sketch it in paint, which is a little bit crazy, but I need to know where where this is going to be making a little curve line. I have decided it'll be easier to set in my figure where I'm going to want my figure to be than um, trying to figure out where the surface the figure is on is going to be. This is, this is the decision that I've made. If you've ever watched the art Sherpa retreat channel, you kind of know this, backwards way that I work these things out for myself. Um, as a teacher, I always try to work things out in a more kind of linear um, move for you guys. But for me, I kind of do this like little stick figure. I'm like, where are you at? And then the stick figure kind of helps me understand where, where things are. So if I need to do that, then I'm going to come up here and do this. And hopefully that will be enough for me to set what I'm going to want to set in. That's in perspective. That's also like sometimes I'll set where my hips are. So what I'm doing is this is almost like a version of Bean Man. If you've ever done Bean Man with me. I'm like, where be Bean Man? I don't know. So grab that and then so I can alternate between that. And then I need a bubble reference because you shouldn't like pay for your imagination. But as you put objects in, if you can um, have an image that you reference for just how the structure is or how lights are, or it helps if you can spell words. is definitely, definitely helpful uh, in every conceivable way. All right, so now I'm gonna put out some luminous rose, just because this is gonna be fun. I meant to grab luminous opera, but I grabbed the wrong color. It'll work. And I'm gonna put out some phthalo blue. I also thought, I think I had some cobalt blue, but I think I'm gonna put out phthalo. Right, and I'm gonna put out, I've got some Hansa yellow light and I'm gonna put out, but I'm gonna put out CAD yellow. So we've almost got some primaries going and the trick will be 
getting some circles going that I know where objects are and I want, let's say one big circle kind of coming in and off. So I'll take my tape and go halfway in and off. That'll, that'll be an interesting bubble. By making a bubble that comes in off the surface, comes into that, why can't I see that? I chalk that hard, baby. Did you? I thought did you I press did. too hard with your chalk? No, not hard enough. You... I didn't press hard enough. And it's our, I might have to like, all right. When all else fails, Quran to Ash. Mm. Ha! It solved it. What I do? I solved it. I'm going to take a filbert. This is a black uh, pearl filbert. And I'm going to grab my fluid white and a little of my glazy medium. And I'm going to come in and start to define the edge of this. And then I use my glazing medium as I'm defining it. It kind of blends in. I want to leave a lot of the background in or it's not really going to show up, is it? It's just coming in off this. I'll make a traceable of this right after the show. Mm. And you guys can do it. Only the cool. brave, though. Only the brave. Only the brave. <laughs> okay, that isn't my coffee. That's water. I don't have any coffee. You can see that first bubble there. Then the rest of the bubbles I will kind of try to deal with on a freehand basis if I can. But I wanted to make sure that I've got the big one there. And I will put in some other ones using my glazing medium to make my white, my fluid white even more transparent. Right? And where I have to, I will blend these little bubbles so that they're not too defined. I want them to be soft. This is going to be some of your favorite painting that I've ever done, even though I've had no plan. And I don't have the chat, so John's going to have to tell me what's going on. Oh, let's see. Oh, there's a really good question that Jessica just popped up with. Hmm. What's the difference between a filbert and a cat's tongue? A cat's tongue um, generally is a pointed filbert. So a filbert is rounded and doesn't have a point, looks like a tongue. And a cat's tongue has a bit of a point to it. Why? I don't know. Because filbert means cat tongue in French, so... Hmm. And really, it was like those were brushes that you saw in decorative uh, toll painting or an oil painting, and we weren't really seeing them in acrylic. So that was definitely a brush I wanted to see uh, be in acrylic. Just putting out some thoughts of where bubbles can be. Those hues over there. Mm -hmm. Put out them thoughts. I know, I completely like to totally <laughs> use that so wrong. <laughs> but the first time I heard it, that was the first thing. I'm like, yeah, that who hue, uh, hue over there is a big problem. I watch too much uh, Bravo is what it is. Mm, I don't know if too much. I'm trying to make sure that Andy Cohen is a uh, got a job security, I guess. <laughs> I'm just blending those bubbles out so they're there. I can paint them in more defined later, right? But getting them in now. And the reason that I'm thinking about that definition, and I'll down on that. Please don't do it as a vector. Okay. So the reason that that's of important to me, hopefully they're both there. Yes, they are is that um, I want to be able to do this cool thing here. So I want to be able to go and we're going to come in and out of the clouds, I feel. There was a story I wrote for my daughter, my eldest, when she was little, and it was called Tansy Fair. Mm -hmm. and it was Tansy Fair's magical hair, and it was the story about this girl whose hair ended up mysteriously and magically growing. And no matter what they did, it kept growing and growing and growing. And then each night, monsters and snarls would get in it and have parties and create knots in her hair. And, her, and nothing could cut her hair. And the longer it got, the more monsters and snarls were in it. 
And so it was this adventure between her and her mother about trying to find a way. Do a conjoined bubble there. Where they're attached to each other like that. It's just important with bubbles to, to vary your sizes. Make sure you're big and small. You want to have, like, this one should then be about this big based on the size of those there. I think that's a nice number of bubbles, yeah. I may say. And just using my glaze. I use my glazing medium all up. Did you? Mm-hmm. Mm. If you're not familiar with this product, it is made by Golden Artist Colors and is a lot of fun. Um, again, this is going to end up being my favorite painting, I can tell. Sometimes when you paint without a plan, when you have a day like I did where your where your plans, the best laid plans of mice and men, fall apart completely, the best stuff comes out of you if, if you can keep from letting the day take you. You don't want to let the day take you. Right. And what I mean by that is don't let the problems or the challenges, you know, roll you or make it so that, you know, you can't find a path through what is going on. There we go. Now, now, now. Now it's willing to work with me. There we go. Trying to. Make sure that there's this motion here and that, that it makes sense when we go to paint it. So I think the next fun thing I get to do is probably paint in my figure and then put some objects around that figure. Um, I've got some pink out. Let's put out some colors. We've got quinacridone. I'm going to put out some yellow ochre. And We'll do something magical for the dress, I would say. Maybe maybe that's a great place to put this magenta into the dress that's going on, I would think. But I've got to get some skin tone going. And I'll do a number four round to paint in things like the feet. When you first do it like something like this where you're free painting it, you know, you're kind of blocking it in. You know, just recognize that these are things that are happening in a process i can't see the chat so i don't know if you can see the chat see here oh i have gotta scroll back down here mm -hmm. paula says thank you for the words of encouragement cinnamon you are She's, very welcome she has a lot of challenges going on right now and it's really nice to have the words of encouragement sometimes that's all we need right it's just a little bit of a little bit of hope your uh, Sarah was asking about your lazy Susan. It's twelve inches in diameter. It's twelve inches in diameter. I got the one by um, the Pioneer woman at at Walmart because it has the pretty flowers on it. Mm -hmm. So obviously had to totally like get into that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just painting in a nice little leg here. I think a lot about the shaping of the leg, right? So if it, there's a half there you know exaggerating those shapes can always be helpful oh that's interesting mm. so uh Alyssa was thinking about using a pen name where she would instead of signing with her real name sign with Alyssa otter okay what do you think about using a, an art name so to speak i would say it is the trend right now to do so um the young artists coming up are absolutely using uh, pen names or alternative names to their real names to make brand identification. Uh, Laura Zombie, um, Casey, well, I guess Casey Gold, that could actually be her name, but there have been different artists coming up. And what I would say is you're, if you're an artist of your time, right? Mm -hmm. So um, before me, it was the big garish signatures and the big ego painters that put massive marks on their stuff. Uh, and then it's been moving into a lot of the painters saying, hey, I'm not going to sign in any way at all because you should know me. I don't know. It's like some sort of loyalty test to, to their collectors. that We should know who they are uh, based on their style. Mm -hmm. um, and every time it has a trend, I would say that you want to be a product of your time, you know, 
But you also need to be true to who you are. Like, I'm never going to just not sign my name. But I am thoughtful about how I sign it. So you've got to balance the time that you live in, your contemporaries, and you. Whatever you do, you're stuck with. So, um, like my mom, Ginger Cook, probably should have done a Google search. Uh, <laughs> just to know what she was up against because Ginger Cook pulls up about 10,000 recipes. So it's very hard. It took a long time to surface uh, as what she was as a painter, right? And, and, and even now, Google kind of depends on looking at is the person who's searching, is that person um, looking to cook or to paint to, to like decide what it's going to surface. I'm going to put this far leg a little more in shadow. I love just like doing uh, skin tones like right off the cuff like this. It's like whatever, skin tones, got it. There's going to be a skirt right here, so. I'm going to check on kids. These can be just, look at the legs. It's like two little hot dogs are sticking out there. So I, what I would say is, is that you've got to really think about your business your creativity and your purpose as an artist and find the Venn diagram where all those fit really well and try to stay as true to you as you can. I think the most important thing that I do as a professional artist is I created a mission statement and I have created mission statements for whatever I'm doing in my art. A mission statement is a very short description, a sentence, two sentences that very quick, quickly and succinctly sums up what you're about. Like the Art Sherpa is about making art easy and accessible for everyone. So whenever I'm doing something, whatever it is that I'm doing, I have to go back and ask myself, am I making this easy and accessible and is it for everyone? And I try to do things that are as true to that as I can while recognizing that I, Cinnamon Cooney, the, the artist behind all of this, um, I have particular artistic needs. I need to paint things that leave me feeling... Uh, intact and holistic in my spirit um, I can't really dip into deep negativity um, so uh, really melancholy paintings um, I can do them I can really do them but it's they're not good for me I can do them. no I can and you I know can it do them I can really do them. do you want to go back to that do you want to go back to that world do you know no, you don't you no. know you don't <laughs> where you're like you had to really like me as a girl to you, you would look at my art all the time and be like, huh, that's an interesting thing you're doing there. So you, it's just important. You had some weird ones. I did. And that was right for me at that time, wasn't it? Your charcoal phase still. Disturbed I, you? I, I, I'm not sure where you were going there. I think I was just trying to demonstrate the tension within myself. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Such like tension. But you've got to find that Venn diagram, right, of mm -hmm. what is good business and also the good business of being you. Because John always says something very important to people, and I really like it. He says, imagine you doing this 10 years from now. Is that who you want to be? Make sure that your goal leaves you in a place that is where you want to be. painting these legs forever but they're important so i'm gonna paint them because now i really like this painting and now mm. i'm emotionally invested i like it when you're emotionally invested it's when you get in trouble also like kind of getting it into my head about what am i going to do about these feet but i think i know i'm just working my like little um My colors. So feet are an interesting bit. And you've got heels. And, you know, in this particular one, I think I'm going to bend, point the toe. And I literally made that decision right now. <laughs> you have very good uh, gesture with your feet. Well, hands, feet, people's hair. You do pretty good gesture in general. You like you like my gesture. Actually, my favorite painting you ever did was the um, gesture people that were just sort of shape people in the shape land with the shape hills. <laughs> Remember that one? 
the favorite one I ever did? That's been my favorite still. I can't. I don't even know what happened to it. I wish I still had it. Really? Yeah, I don't even. I don't even have a picture of it. My gosh, you're so. You don't even have a picture of it. Yeah. So I couldn't even make it for you again. Could you? Could you sketch it sort of out on a sketch piece of paper? <laughs> Maybe I can make it for you again. I have a hair in my palette. It is making me so super duper miserable, and I'm gonna fight it. It was awesome because what it was, it was this. These sort of rolling green hills and cinnamon did these shaped trees that were um, very three-dimensional shaped trees. I'm, I'm not describing this well, but um, and the two characters that were in it were a blue and a yellow character. There were these very generic shapey people, um, but uh, it just sort of reminded me of cinnamon kind of wandering around out like we did a lot. One of my favorite paintings. Uh-oh. Hmm. I bought a lens. Another one? Oh, it, or is the lens not working? Oh, no, it's working good. It's working so good, I bought another one. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your contribution to the channel. <laughs> this, this is why I can't have a nice car. I keep buying lenses. <laughs> uh, you know, you do what you got to do. Actually, I'm very happy with my car. I have rebuilt it. A few times. It is faster, stronger, better. Million dollar Suzuki. You just get those little toes in, right? The little, little peek of the little toes. Isn't that crazy? It is. They Let's go see. in, though. They go in, and then there you are. As Buckaroo Bonsai says, no matter where you go, there you are. I'm not shopping. I'm gearing up. <laughs> You're not shopping. Did somebody like, John, are you shopping? My mom. She's like, you deserve your Saturday painting. This is what we're doing. You deserve I'm, it because you deserve a Saturday painting, even I'm, when we fail. And we'll see you Tuesday for Lake Como. Oh, it was such a good painting. I hope it still does well. So what happened was is that while we were live in the previous session, it did not work out. A package arrived in the mail. It was that lens that's currently attached to Cinnamon's camera above her head. How would it's they know cool. it's attached to my camera right above their head? Well, they wouldn't, but I'm telling them that it is. Okay, you're telling them. Yeah. Okay. Well, and that's we nice of you to tell them. Well, if you were to go back and look at Lake Como, at least, well, if you had the link to it. Actually, if you go back and look at any other recent video and look at it, you'll see that this field is a little flatter and a little wider, optically speaking. And to be honest has slightly better contrast, especially when you look at the blacks, as compared to the last lens that I had on there. Mm -hmm. So I was so impressed with it that I bought the last one that was refurbished. So I get an extra. So you can have an extra just in case this one breaks? Well, no. So the camera that looks at you, in front uh -huh. of you, is the same camera. I'm, I'm more concerned about the three-quarter camera. Well, see, it's going to become a three-quarter camera, ah. and then Robo camera is going to come the front camera, and then, you see what I'm saying? I do. I had to have two of these new kinds of lenses for the two um, black magic bodies. I'm just setting uh, the shoulders, which are kind of in perspective here. I may have to, what I'll do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the hands and the arms in, and then I'll set the strings. What's wonderful about any hands that are holding on to swing strings, I haven't done a swing girl in a really long time. Well, on, on the main channel. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a minute. And you know, you know how I love my swing girls. You know how I do. I do. Wonder. What? always just fun to get in there and make it like darker skin color so how i'm getting the skin color darker is i'll go back with a darker amount of quinacridone and a little more had uh yellow ochre and that's like helping me got a couple of the arms here those are looking lovely right just mm -hmm. throw in some arms the way to get here this isn't like oh well 
your talent. I mean, it is in that, you know, we all have an aptitudes for our creativity. What you're really working out here is that when you do something a lot, you get a familiarity with it. And that will help you when you've got to paint it sort of gesturally or loosely and you want to really enjoy that. Now I'm going to come in with a little bit of my, oh, not that big. That would totally show up. <laughs> a little bit of this pink and white. I can kind of erase maybe a little bit here. Be working that in in a second. And I don't want it to be as defined. So what you're seeing me doing is kind of erasing or changing my mind about something and not losing my whole painting to do it. <coughs> okay. Just a cough. Oh. Just a cough. <laughs> oh, I know. I just didn't need to Nowadays, you. man, you've got to say, you've got to be like, what is happening? Because people are like, not sure. This color. Woo! Let's get into it. I'm going to add a little white to it because it's a lot, just pure. And let's bring a little dress here. I feel like I missed something. You did. I'm sure you did. Um, I, was, I was checking out the bears, the bear data. Oh, uh, in our area? Well, I have, if, if people want to stay at the end, I think I can show them the bear and the dent. To this did it left in your car? Yes. It did, no, it left a dent it, in his car? Actually, it left multiple dents. But, that, you know, it's, it's a 300, 350 pound bear jumping out of a trash bin next to my Suzuki. It Things just could went, have gone oh, much worse. It could have gone way worse. Could have gone so much worse. It was just some dirt and rubbing and a couple of dents. But you know what? When I caught up with Mr. Bear and asked him for his insurance, he, he was, told you to suck it. He was unwilling to share. So I figured I'm going to let this one, this one go and I'm just going to now no longer have to worry about any dents on my car because you know, it's already got the first dent. So I mean, now just I don't I don't have to worry about any more of them. And it was the bear's fault. It wasn't mine. So, That's what you're going with now? Yeah. I didn't you know. It was the bear's fault, not the yours. The bear did it and didn't have insurance. So now my car's dented and I can't. It's not my fault. Not your fault. I live with a dented car. It's actually, I'm, I think it's kind of cool. The bear dent. A little bit of that just sort of now, dripping off. Is Luminous Rose Holbein? A luminous Rose, Luminous Opera, all of them are Holbein. Best uh, UV paint is by Holbein. Mm. By like magnitudes. I would say it's definitely magnitudes. Do, 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 do. Let's I'm see if those. Creating a little bit of highlights here, just a couple of places so that things have form and shape. We'll do some stuff in a little bit to make sure. Ooh, I can't. And that they do. So we've just got a couple places, it, you know, that are challenging for us in the piece, but we'll work it out as we go. Because, again, we're making it up. We didn't pre-sketch. We didn't have a plan. <laughs> but we didn't, so that's, you know. You say that like there is ever a plan. There's always a plan. And the plan is to figure it out as when you go. we get there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. Figure it out as you go. And I just have to decide how I want to do this. All right. I will just come in a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is incrementally come in and make sure that things are in the kind of correct perspective for what we're painting since we're 
coming in sometimes you come into a painting from one angle and sometimes you kind of come into it from like this sort of like unexpected place where you're like oh i'm gonna work it out as i go and so mm. whenever you're gonna work it out as you go you'll be incrementally working some things out One of the hardest, most challenging things is when you do faces or heads or anything from an unintuitive angle. So. Yeah, it, uh, one of our moderators was commenting on that uh, had a bison rub up against a rubber a bison mm -hmm. a bison diox a bison named diox no what? moderator diox oh Dox. Yeah, i was like a diox bison i think that a would be interesting so got more problems going on than a bison it's interesting when they when when wildlife decides that you're whatever you humans have got going on is what they want to be like when they decide your car is a warm place and they're going to sit on it. Yeah. No, because a uh, pretty much anything bigger than you decides to sit on your car. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. That's right. And pretty much all livestock is bitter, bigger than us. So it's it's one of the things. Cow decides your car is a warm place to sit. It you're going to have a hard time getting that cow off. You are. I'm going to have a hard time getting his face in. Nah. nah, I mean, it is. I am. It's okay. I'm not too worried about it. I feel like I'm rambling on and things. Because you're trying to keep him entertained while I'm thinking so hard. <laughs> I'm spinning the place. You were hoping to be able to, like, walk off on this video, and you're like, oh, no, I'm super stuck here. She's spinning plates. <laughs> Just catching a profile on this uh, particular swing person. We well, can zoom in on the face now. You might need to, but that's not necessarily a good thing because I'm going to have to come in absolutely from another Ooh, side. And I'm, I'm going to keep moving. Hold on. I'm going to do some magic stuff. Uh -huh. I'm going to go split that input. Split the input. And I'm going to go to that input. Oh, uh, I'm gonna crop that other input. I'm just trying to touch <laughs> in and make sure that what I am painting is a uh, kind of correct. Oop. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I want cut that. Sorry, and I okay. wanted to hit this button. See, then it does that so much nicer, and you don't even. I don't even then know. Then I right? can go over here to this button. This is the one that I wanted to mess with. And now I can do this and not interfere with the other one. See? Is that what you wanted there, Cinnamon? Hmm? Oh, okay. Yeah. I have my magic magnifiers on. You have your magic magnifiers on. So this is three hoot two, and here's why. Because it is a interesting and challenging way to get into the painting. That's a way to elevate the hoots, right? So I'm going to add shadow and a few like key bits of shadow and everything. Sometimes it's just hard to find, find your, at least it's easy to find the skin tone. Hmm. Is it? Yeah. Let's see here. Because it's You're... very few, it's very few colors, so. Hmm, I'm wondering now. I have to go look at the different layers. And I just want to, I'm trying to create, what I have a tendency to do is age up faces, which means my noses are too long. And that's what I'm always having to watch what I'm doing is aging up my faces. Mm hmm.
Because you want to age them up. Really easy to want to do that. What is... I'm just trying to create the features that I've got to get in here. And then I, I think what I'll do is I'll highlight them once I get them placed in. You use layers of color to make those complex shapes. Yeah. I'm just coming in and, and like I used a dark color so I could see what the heck I was doing. Because I want I want a particular look or, com you know, I've decided to give myself not the easy way. Never the easy way. Why would I do the easy way? Uh, I don't know. I never do. I always think to myself, you know what we should do? We should go live with no plan. And then I should paint something super challenging and upside down. And so what you're seeing me do is like make adjustments to things that I'm seeing. One of the nice things about the lazy Susan is it will let you see that you're off on an angle. No, that's, there's, that's a name that has, I'm not sure if Jersey Tomata mm -hmm. says we have po possums and hawks and raccoons and groundhogs and chipmunks and bungy, bunnies and feral cats. And man, I, I like possums. We have, I've not seen a single possum since we've been out here. No. You know what I'm going to do to make this easier for me? No. I'm going to dry it. Are you? Yep. We have lots of bunnies. We do have lots of bunnies. And we know that we don't have feral cats. Since I know I'm going to dry it, I'm going to do some more cloud work and kind of fix some of the space around here so that none of the lines are evident. It's like, you know, we're here right now. We have a herd of old bunnies, which means that there are no predators around. Save for our dogs who chase them. Our dogs are not really predators. Yeah, I know. I mean, they are. Yes, we do understand that dogs are predators. We do get that. But they would catch just... them and then the rabbit's bigger than they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the rabbit actually does outweigh two of the dogs. For sure. I would venture that maybe three. Like, this isn't that big. She just looks big. She has fur. That's fur. I think what I'm, I have been noticing this week is I am struggling in some areas to see things well. Is somebody texting you going, get off air? I will come. I will get into this and it will be awesome. I just... Lean in and hopefully get to see this. Sometimes I have to improve the flow on these tiny little brushes. And then you just create that space. Who are we talking to? This? Yeah. Repair people. Oh. Are they going to fix something? Yes. Many things in the house. It's always nice. Yeah. Angie, and, Angie would say, where's your glasses? Don't know, Angie. Which is why you cannot see. Which is, yeah, it just means that I have to think about it a little more to do it. That's what it means. I have to think about it a little more to do it because I don't have my glasses. Do I need to go find them? Maybe. All right, I'll be there. Dude, because I am like. I'll model my mask. I think I put it on. 
went wrong and probably took my puffy off. There we go. I can't get the other ear. I don't know why he gave me this activity because I'm like already struggling doing the painting. There. I have a mask. It's my fox. There's a matching pillow and I have a cup. Oh my goodness, that just took a lot to get to, I tell you what, sometimes you just come at it from the other angle and you're like, I'm just going to get this one way or another, I don't know how, I don't know when, but it's happening. So value is a key player when you're painting and sometimes if your values are too close your objects won't register and then as you're painting you may notice that you have to create a change in value for the object to show. It's okay, I worked it out. I went the opposite direction. See how that is. Use yours. Oh, these are great. <laughs> these are terrific wonderful baby thank you oh my goodness loving that now i can get in there and deal with it i'm gonna just try to get the little eye perspective here and then a little bit of we're getting some just basic features in and then I will refine them because they're a little bit big because we were sizing from two different places. So I'll come in and Isn't that great how that works. If you can't come in from one side, you come in from another. It's just sometimes what it takes. And come in with some values. Bring my white. Ended up being a little fussier than I meant for it to be. But you do what you got to do. Now, I've got to place an ear. And whenever I've got to place an ear, I can tell you right now that the trick of that is going to be make sure that glasses can sit on it. So I like to line it up. And so the jaws here, I've got to line it up with an eye. Whatever else I do after that, it won't be so bad because I'll have that working. Okay, take those off for the moment. Get back into my high magenta. Make sure that that's there. And now I can begin the fun part. So for me, I'm going to put out, I think I'm going to do mm, cad red. I've got some cad red light. You guys are going to like this. I'm about to do a lot. You guys are going to like it. And then we'll start refining things so that they make some kind of sense, right? Maybe a little bit, kind of. Mm -hmm. I'm putting out some cad red light. It's going to make me some nice orange. I'll put out some phthalo green. I've got uh, some luminous violet. I may use that. I may use Doc's they're, purple, they're depending. Oh, wh what are they asking? They're asking what happened to the feed earlier. Oh, so you should explain the technical challenges of the feed while I start to put in her hair. I'm going to start with add red. All right. Well, what I would say... We had too big a file size is pretty much the short answer to it is that yeah. uh, when we produce the videos for the show ahead of time, they're you know, full size, high definition files. And 
a four, three and a half hour file was bigger than what could fit into the frame buffer. So I had to break it into th smaller pieces. And he did. So I did. And it's outputting those smaller pieces now. And then that'll he, work just fine. He broke it into chunks and told it what for. It was like, no to you. You will not get away with it. And it said, are you sure? Because I really want to. And he was like, no. That's Doc's purple. It looks like black when you put it on the palette, but it's dot oxazine purple. Mm. So I'm going to get a little of that with some white going. I'll add some of this pink to it to improve. And this is that luminous rose, basically just a high magenta because I want to improve it. I'm curious. I'm going to try something. Do, 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 do. See if I can make things happen. Can you? I don't know. General, I'm going to do this. What's that? All right. Shh. Here. I'm going to add some white to that just to exaggerate it. So, what I've done is I've created the beginning and the end of where I'm going. Um, I like to do this so that it doesn't get so overwhelming in the journey. Mm. I know where the be the start and the stop is, and I can come in and layer things okay. Neat. What that. I'm trying to do is recreate our pre-produced show live? using the tools that I have with my live producer. Yeah. <laughs> Not easy. Eh, I I might be able to do it. Are you in over your head? Oh, all the time. You know I am in over my head all the time. But it's Saturday, and Saturday is a paint day. And here we go. All right. I had this idea here. I had, I'm going to put out some luminous green too because it's so bright and I, and I want this to remain very bright. Look how bright that green is. I'm okay. I'll take my uh, cad yellow and get it into my luminous green. And as you can see, it's just going to create this just super amazing bright color. I'm going to try to create the effect that this rainbow of hair is going to be going behind some of these clouds and in front of some others to really sort of create that sense of like, oh, hey, she's super duper in the clouds. Because <gasps> you would want her to super duper be in the clouds coming down. So that's what we're thinking about is how can we give that effect and where do we want to exaggerate those things? You don't have a picture in picture. Of course not. We're making it up out of our head. All right. Well, hold on. That would be really scary if we had a picture in picture because there would be wires stuck in my head. Let's zoom out. And there would be crying. This is like an art challenge. This is me just making something up and painting it live. Didn't research, didn't sketch, didn't design. <laughs> what could go wrong? This okay. is kind of, it kind of worked. I can. I'm going to add some more fluid white. This is glazing medium and put out some more white. I'm taking my phthalo blue and my white. And then we're going to come between. And I want to make a nice hairline. I'll be a little thoughtful through here. I think normally instead of the crack and oops. That one, yeah. What? Let's go. Let's go back in. I gotta. I almost had it. All right. So we have. There's. You guys kind of get the direction it's going, dude. Right. And there's two. <gasps> there it is. Oh, let me go fix. Oh, man, you're off the screen. To be important. No, I don't want to do. I don't want to do the ultramarine because I want this blue to stand out. From the other colors, so I gotta do phthalo blue. Okay, back over to 
This one. Just painting my blue strands. I will get into a deeper green right here. Or the green and this sort of like maybe the green and the cad yellow. Just so that they're a it's bright, but it's a it's a green that we can really see. What there brush are you using? I'm just using the Art Sherpa number four round. There we go. So we have the basis of the hair in now. A little bit. We do want to definitely come in and, and, and do some things where we work a few things. So the hair looks, the hairline is nice. Right. Like you do, hairlines should be nice. Pulling in those. Rainbows are always fun to sort of work with. I'm gonna get back into my luminous color here. So Brenda would like you, um, are you using the glazing liquid with the colors on the hair? Um, a, a little bit, but mostly the fluid white. Just making sure that the dress feels like bright and cheerful. Come along in very, very light luminous pink. Kind of shade that out there. So sometimes um, if an, uh, like an idea or painting is super complicated, this would be why like I pre-paint it because it lets me simplify the way through. But when you're just trying to paint out your imagination, you know, you've got to kind of follow your, your process and then you use your good techniques, you know, your experience with everything to sort of help you define what you've got going on. We'll have to figure out how I want to set this swing and where I'm going to do that. While I'm working that out, here, let's zoom out and take it in for a second. Right. Hold on, I'll zoom it out. So I've got to create sense of what she's swinging on. Right, so I've got to do that. I've got to refine some hair, and I've got to create the luminous of the bubbles. The, uh, the bubbles. The luminous of the bubbles. The luminous of the bubbles. Luminous bubbles are super important, sir. They are. I'm going to start getting, and I'm going to be using my glazy medium on this kind of thing super duper hard. Just to make sure colors are transparent. I might even want to think like a, a bigger brush. I might even do some of these with my more blendy brush. The bubbles were always sort of playing the way that they reflect a color. I'm going to take a little bit of my, my blue here and then I'll come across this other side. I'm going to wipe it off. And definitely shade that. And do similar things. And I'm adding a little touch of blue. 
using the number 12 Princeton, and that's just so it'll blend. All right, I want to blend it. I want to build these up in a slow process. I don't want to overwhelm what I've got going on really fast because bubbles are kind of transparent. There we go. So we're starting that. That looks pretty good. Magenta is a pretty great value to do on a bubble. I can always just soften that, wipe off the paint, and make sure that these sort of, you know, you can get a little purple magenta in there too. How are you doing, babe? I would love a cup of coffee. Are you, when you go make yeah. yourself another one, I would love one. I can go make you a cup of coffee. That would be amazing. I'm sort of watching you work. Making bubbles in the sky. It's pretty cool. On a painting we didn't plan. So Unplanned it really is, painting. guys. We we did plan a great painting. It was the painting we planned was great. Yeah. I definitely want to use um glazing medium with any of these colors just because I want things to be transparent. So if ever I'm working one of my bubbles and it just feels a little too strong and can come put it back. No, and maybe, you know, we're, maybe it's not resonating with the community. I don't know, just because I can't see the chat. See here, I was just over checking on that. You were asking what blending brush you were using. I'm using a number four round and a number 12 Princeton blender. I love the number 12 Princeton blender a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I do, I do. It's a very good little brush. Very good little brush. And glazing medium. And the reason there's some glazing medium into this is because you know, your bubbles are going to be very transparent. You want to do things that um, inform that transparency. I haven't even gotten into my, like, whites or reflections or any of that, or yellows or oranges that just pop these into bubble world. Is everyone liking this? Yeah, oh, quite a bit. Oh, good. This is, you know, this is one of those that I think everyone just, it, it, it's a surprise. It was a surprise to me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're all surprised right now. <laughs> We're all surprised right now. It's a surprise to me on how I'm gonna deal with her bum bum. I'll have to put the thing right about here. Okay, just trying to figure out where my perspective is on it. Because I'll have to pull it in. I'm going to paint this perspective, like the beginning of what will be the perspective of this, John. Okay. And then I'll go to the chat and, and, and I'll explain what I've done so far if you want to get me. Um, but after I put this, like, okay. beginning of this in. No so problem. I'm going to just use brown. I know that's an obvious color for wood, but right now I'm just trying to tell myself where is the seat and what do I need to change so that the seat can be here? Because some of her dress will need to change for the seat to be realistically in this space underneath her. I'm taking a little bit of my ultramarine and my current sienna.
when I see that, then I know that I've got to move the seat of her dress. So I'm going to take the background color that I have, which is the Vinacridone Magenta in Titanium White. I'll mix up a fairly close background color. Oh my gosh, thank you. And then I'm going to See how we change the seating of the dress to where it would be uh, changed by the seat that she's on. Helping us just get a sense of what we would be seeing because she's got to be swinging on something. All right, I'm going to switch the chat. So I'm about to be able to see what you guys have to say. Hopefully my sound is good. Hopefully things are good. Hopefully you're putting up with me. Apparently some of you are. <laughs> some of you are putting up with me. So yeah, this is a little different than our new format. Um, like as I'm looking at it, like I'm noticing that I need to trim her neck back. Like sometimes when you look at things, you'll be like, hey, what's that? And you'll be like, oh, I need to trim that neck back. You just do that. You just come in and you're like, oh, what is it? You gotta, that's one of the things I'll say I really enjoy about the, um, round circular moving it around all the time this lazy susan is because it lets me oh and i want to say thank you to sarah stewart okay and i'm going to catch up catch up to chat uh dana fuqua says love you mary youngblood says i've never used gouache and moderate thela likes this format and amy says are you feeling better so i only really had one day i was feeling bad it was just bad enough to have to go somewhere and see a doctor and now we're just doing the follow-up testing and so i have a little monitor on it but everything has been fine and i've been feeling great since then you know so it's really just about um being being responsible and adulting when you're supposed to adult you know you're supposed to adult and i decided to adult so that's what i had going on i'm going to change this some cleaner water because and i think this is my cleanest water right here in my red cup um i'm going to get back into some of the rainbow and start defining the hair hmm? Oh yeah, I'm so grateful for the coffee, you have no idea. So here we go. I'm gonna add some darker values to the cad red so it can really show up as cad red in her hair. This is a great time to exaggerate certain elements of it. I'm gonna knock that back there where it sort of went over the bubble just because I want it to feel like she's, the bubble's in front of her. This is a big focal bubble. You know. Oh, thank you, Karen and, and Mary. Yeah, so I mean, I am fine. Um, I have one more weird little set of results to get back to confirm that I'm fine, but every single test that I've done has come back and said, you're good. You're good, everything is okay, you're good. I'm gonna go with that. You know, until they give me a reason to question that on some kind of level, I'm gonna just go with the, I'm fine. I'm just refining some of the hair there. If I wanna make some highlights and, and do some interesting things with it, I will come in with some lighter orange just to Shade and roll the hair because how we paint hair, whether we're painting it yellow or rainbow, kind of the same, really, honestly. It's not so different. I'm gonna pull out some yellow and get some fluid white. And I'm going to add some yellow, stronger yellow to the section of the hair. Who wouldn't want some stronger yellow to the, can you believe that we're just doing this? Like we had no plan and here we are just doing that. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, the question was the other day, um, I, I, the other day I had uh, a heart rhythm that went crazy. Like, like my heart felt like it was just out of sync and it, it wasn't getting better and I was getting a little breathless. We put monitors on and my heart was, rate was like all over the place. So just in case, and it's the first time I ever went, I went to the ER. Um, I loved everybody there, appreciated every first responder, everybody involved. I just don't ever want to be there again. It's not like a lot of fun. Um, but we went there, all my tests were good. Everything was okay. It looks like it just got kicked out of rhythm. And then they were like, you know, you should check and make sure that's the thing that's not happening. 
So I went and saw a cardiologist and they did some tests and all those came back good. But they're like, let's just stick this thing to your chest and make it so you can't swim in the pool or take an effective shower for two weeks. And then um, hopefully we'll be able to tell if there's like a thing you're not noticing. But I don't think there's a thing I'm not noticing because mostly I feel good all the time. So yay, it's super hot. I love super hot coffee. Test it. I know that's good. I know I like super hot coffee. I'm coming in with some brighter green. It's nice to get a little bright green involved, right? And you see how we can just pull these things in on the hair and make the hair way more interesting. And get some tendrils that'll come across. So I'm okay. I'm okay, but that's that's sort of what inspired some changes in the formatting. And I'm being chill and I'm okay. And I think it's so here's the thing. Like I tell people all the time, you know, take care of yourself and you know, you're a valuable person and self-care is important. And then sometimes I'm not really good at taking my own advice and doing self-care. So I'm trying to follow my own advice and not like avoid the doctor like I have in the past. Cause I, I like, I, I, I tend to avoid the doctor just generally. And you know, you shouldn't probably do that. I'm going to get a little white involved so that I can really, really take a tendril down. So in hair, whenever you're trying to develop like texture for hair, right? Like you can see me just picking some lighter colors. And that's how we make the hair seem like it's in motion and some of it's in shadow. And so now her rainbow hair feels very rainbow. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jazzy Tamanta had her, uh, uh, wait, uh, Jazz was her jazz. Anyways, if you're asking how, where is this coming from? There's no pre-sketch. There was no idea. The beautiful Lake Como stream that I had pre-painted and rocked out and spent three and a half hours on and done spent hours, all that, it didn't fail. It's like there was an issue with this file size. So I'm like, oh, well, maybe we can just do a painting on the fly and I'll make something up. And I said, do you guys want something melancholy or do you want something whimsical? And everyone's like, man, the world is sucking right now. So let's do something optimistic. And this is my answer to that question. And I think I answered it pretty well. If I am to be honest, I'm going to get a little of my pink on here and some of my fluid white. This is that luminous rose. And I'm going to move the skirt forward just a little bit, I think. Just to make it, uh, since we lost some of it to the seat, some, I don't want to lose all of it to the seat though. So I'm going to do this. That's how I'm doing it, but I've planted a seat there. So it's like, it's like the skirt is maybe um, a little bit in front of the seat. And as long, I think, as the rope goes right here, I'll be okay. That's my plan. I should probably erase that pink rope that I just made. Erase it. We don't want it there yet. So that's what we're doing. And then we thought we'd do some bubbles and stuff. And I thought that that was good. I'm going to um, put John's glasses on and maybe give her some pink lips, I think. See if I can do that very, very, very carefully a little bit. There we go. A little bit of a pink lip. A little bit of a bottom lip. Just, just some though. Just the smallest amount. There we go. Look at that. So now we have lips and, a, and light eyelashes and a bit of an ear. You know, we wanted an ear and we got a bit of an ear. And an ear is important. If I take my um, ultramarine blue over to my skin tones, I will get this like really weird plum color that I can use to um, also help define that her ear has a shadow in it. Not a tick, which is what it seems to have done right there, but you know, a shadow. So sometimes I have to go back and, and kind of touch things up again. There you go. So now our ear can have a little something and then we highlight the skin tone like you do creating a highlight and then you can come in and put a highlight in. Sometimes with small pieces like this, it can take a couple minutes to capture how you want to paint something. So if you're going to do it that way, then you're going to do that. And if that really, really doesn't look right, I'll tell you the trick. If it really, really doesn't look right, the only thing you can do is make it seem like the ear is covered by hair. 
So, like, I am not loving it. I'm going to be honest. Like, I love me, and I think I'm a wonderful painter, but I'm not loving this part right here. So I'm going to grab some yellow and... And fix it. And that's how I fix it. Because I just like, oh, I don't love it. If I don't love it, I change it. If it doesn't work for me, I change it. If it doesn't work for you, you should change it. Uh, oh, you guys should totally name the painting. Um, okay. Annette M's like, oh, totally great idea. What will you name the painting? And I'm like, you guys name it. You name her. You name this painting. That's a good idea. I'm back with coffee. You back? Oh, I got to have some of my coffee, shouldn't I? You should. I should have some of it. I like her hair now. All, all that better. She got a lot of hair. I like I like hair. <sighs> How is that looking? Good. Looking really okay. Good. Looking pretty good. It's gonna really be about the strings and the last finishing. You know, like everything else, it's gonna be the finishing touches, isn't it? Mm. Well, you know, I. I think that'll what's been bring it together, but this is pretty, pretty awesome. I'm going to put out some luminous yellow. You guys can have whatever yellow you have, but luminous yellow kind of looks like an orange. It'll be neat orange for the bubbles. Hmm. You know? Yep. Now I got clean water. Getting those bubbles going, right? Mm -hmm. I think the fun thing about the luminous colors is that um, they really like bring it all together. They really do. I, I really like. Do. Oh my gosh, it's so good. You like it? It's so good. It's so good. This is John being encouraging because he doesn't want me to have a rough day. No, I like it. I really do. <laughs> Just, it's so good. He's like, don't freak out if the stream went wrong. It'll be okay. It'll be all right. It's a good painting. I love it. It is a good painting. It's actually a good painting. Doing a little iridescence. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to iridescent your bubble. Sometimes you do, though. You got to really iridescent the bubble. And then you do little details on the other bubbles. But I think it's really going to come down to also um, the reflections. Yeah. On the bubble, when we put the white on the bubble, and then the bubbles come together. Because bubbles are kind of like a hot mess until you like get all the colors on them. You just kind of go and go and go until you, all the colors are on them, and then you're like, oh. That's doable. What? This is totally doable. This painting? Yeah. Someone saying it wasn't doable? No, it's awesome. I'm just enjoying looking at it. Like, oh. This is pretty, this is doable. <laughs> it wasn't really you love my insecure panic. Somebody said it wasn't doable. No, it's totally doable. Believe in yourself. Ah! <laughs> Break the Sherpa. Ah! Okay. I was just reflecting that I rather liked it. You were reflecting that you liked it. I do. I'm so glad you did. And it's interesting to see what colors like bring the bubble together. 
No. When they when they really show it, when the soap bubble, because soap bubbles, certain soap bubbles are much more colorful than others. Mm-hmm. So I'm just bringing the colors around, and it's just a dance of what's going on in the bubble, right? And then also letting the world behind the bubble sort of show through. Sometimes you got to let the world behind the bubble show through. Yeah. You know, and how you get that done can be super duper challenging for sure. Hey. Uh, I'm softening this up. Dana, this is, a, this is like a Hi, man. Dana. Boy, do we feel this. Okay. What do... If I, what do I do if my golden in this case, but any company paint cap breaks and I can't seal the paint too. Okay. Well, the first thing you do is you get um, a little bit of cellophane and a rubber band and make a little cellophane cap. Yep. Make a cellophane cap. That right? works. It's like the first thing. Chances are though, I always save my caps from all my tubes of paint because a lot of times they're universal and they're interchangeable. <laughs> So I'll keep all my caps, and then if I have something go wrong with a cap, I'll come back and check a cap and uh, see if I can't get it to do, you know, something. Mm, something. Something. I'll be like, will this cap fit? And I have been very surprised over the years how most of my caps will uh, fit on each other. So one, check to see if any of your caps that you might have lying around will fit on your tube of paint. And then if they, if they won't, you do the cellophane until you run out and then you take that tube of paint and you, um, save its cap. So the next one that goes, right. So the next one that goes is, uh, going to fit i'm going to make a little line that's going to be this uh heaven sort of swing because right, you have this swing mm-hmm. that she's on and i'm coming along with a damp brush kind of trying to improve the stroke sometimes that's what it's about is just finding the stroke for this You gotta find them strokes. I'm using my number four cat's tongue. I'm barely pressing. I'm using fluid paint. That's pretty helpful. And I'm just trying to tell a story that, I don't know, there's something that her swing's attached to that's way above her. Mm -hmm. That these swing, that the strings are holding onto the swing and that's where she's swinging from. This one is going to be the most challenging. Because I've got to get the line from the hand, through the hand, to the swing, here. Oh man, that swing. It really brings it together. It needed a swing, didn't it? The sky needed a swing, didn't it? It, it did. needed a swing. Now it has a swing. Patty, thank you so much, Patty. Thank oh you gosh. so much, Thank Patty. You. That's amazing. Thank you, Patty. So, you know, she's just doing her little swing thing. Are you doing your little swing thing at home? I hope so. Swing thing. And I was like to just sort of define the, the hands a bit so we can see them some. You just come back and make sure that they look good and strong against the swing. Against the swing as if against it's adversarial. The against the swing. Dun, dun, dun. You just want to make sure that, they, you know, it looks like it's there. You just come in and kind of trim down whatever needs to trim down. That string needs to trim down. See, cause sometimes you can trim down with an opposing color, even if, like, your main color isn't how you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Right. And now she's got her little hair that's falling down, and we love that, don't we? Oh, yeah. I really like the, the luminous the rose here. This is a luminous rose. 
a little darker than luminous opera but i like it getting it to pull into the hair And I want to create a space of hair where it's like kind of an exciting little hairline. I love the reflections and very nice the complexity. It does get that, doesn't it? Yeah. Sometimes we just come in with a little bit and we just let's weave the colors together because hair doesn't end up in its own zone, does it? Mm -hmm. It has zones and places and you want to make sure that as you've got places that you are. Now making some shadows for the little dress which helps the dress feel a little bit more real, doesn't it? Yeah. So all the rules of everything that we do when we're painting. So we're still three hoot day. We didn't lessen the hootness. Didn't lessen the hootness. The hootness did not get less. The, hoot, the hootness is still kind of intense. No de-hooting. No de-hooting. I'm looking at my bubbles right now. Oh, thank you, Allison. Thank you, Allison. I'm going to put out some more fluid paint from oh, my bubbles. Aislin. Aislin. Thank you, Aislin. For all the little emojis. I love emojis. So I'm going to add some white lines to these bubbles. Also going to add some pretty big white reflections. To help them feel more bubbly. So cool looking. It has its moments. And sometimes we just paint something that we made up, right? Yeah. You know, there's an idea in your head. Maybe it's stuck from another painting or thing that you saw. And you don't know it even. You just like let it out. Nice. Create those little structures of, of reflection. Little bubble reflections, they're powerful. Close bubble. Very nice. Far away bubble. There we go. Just adding little fractions to the bubbles. As with much things though, it'll be down to the sparkles. Mm. <laughs> Just threw my own brush at me and Did got you? paint all over it. <laughs> There we go, guys. We did a painting today, though, didn't we? That's pretty awesome. We didn't give up. We didn't lose hope. We just did a painting. I love it. I'm loving it, too. It's a really nice painting. I think it is as well. I'm going to outline, define a hard edge line for some of these little clouds. You know, we did do them sort of free expression. But by doing this, you can create some definite dimensionality to like that line of clouds, can't you? Cool. I can't tell this if this is your like happy, this is going great, or if this is your happy, like we need to get all there. You have no, lost I like your it. mind. I like this a lot. Okay. Really do. 
think it turned out good. I don't think it came out okay. No. I, you know, sometimes it's a little frustrating when a live goes and has its has its difficulties, but if you just you know, hold on sometimes you can find another way through. Mm-hmm. I think that those are the ones that have the best chance. Like for far away clouds might not necessarily have that little outline. So you, you know, that's a little thing that you might do there, but you wouldn't necessarily do everywhere. Wow. That looks nice. I want some more amazing. of those. I like it. You made, uh, Lord says, you made the 80s child in me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so 80s. You called it. It's very 80s. That's what happened to me here. I got all 80s out. You did. A this is bit. a Lisa Frank moment, isn't it? Mm-hmm. We are a product of the things that we see, and it's what we do with them and how we uh, process it. And oh, I like the sparkles, don't you, John? Mm-hmm. Do I like the sparkles? Wow. Didn't even know you were doing this painting today. I didn't even know I was doing this painting today. Paintings you didn't know you were making today. Mm-hmm. Mm. If I move that, then I can do a really cool sparkle. So I'm going to move it. All right. Sometimes you move things because you're like, ah, I move you. I'm going to put its reflection kind of elsewhere. You know, kind of get, get that going elsewhere. And then I just really want to be able to do a good sparkle there. Mm-hmm. Because I'm liking the sparkle. I probably have to dry it, though. Now you're going to do a traceable for this, right? Yes. I'm going to put a traceable up. And this will be like this will be like the eagle, the space eagle from our what eighty thousand party. It's like, it's consider it your like I don't know Sherpa exam for the year. <laughs> See, oh, there we go. Uh, so she's just giving it a little dry, so we make sure that the uh, layers all don't bleed together. But I'm just so so impressed. I like this one quite a bit. I like the bubbles and the way that they just came together so it's a nice saturday afternoon painting to do let's see there you are there i am shorten some of that things i see like when i'm painting and i'm like oh come here you gotta be shortened you gotta fix that foot mm -hmm. Sometimes things like you, you're painting and you're like, um. Skin tone. Woo, super easy skin tone. There we go. Which is just yeah, that yellow ochre in the. Just want to make that inside go a little bit better. And it just kind of went, it didn't go the way I wanted it to go, so I'm just going to paint it back. So one of my tricks with my feet is I like to have like a defined sort of big toe. Mm -hmm. And that helps like let people know where the foot is, but sometimes it just doesn't show, so. 
Now, now it kind of shows. And you just go through and you're like, oh, come here. Because catching the delicacy of those feet is very helpful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes catching a highlight is also very helpful. To help define those spaces. Okay. Just catching a little highlight on a couple of the objects, defining their space. Ready for mom to be done. And I think I'm hopefully not messing up my reflections. Sometimes I'll work on a different area of the painting that I know needs to be done. Huh? Ma'am, got it. I thought you were saying your mom's coming for me. I was like, what? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, what do I do? All right. So that looks pretty good. Let's take a little bit of our um, Quinn and our yellow ochre, but go ahead and grab some of your, even your docks into there. You're going to make kind of a dark, plummy color. And then come under here. Yeah, I mean, that little kind of little mm. de definition of foot and then. You know, catch those little. Just little definitions, just help her fall out into her universe. Last sparkle. Ugh, that, of course, that's got to bug me right now, like while I'm looking at it too, right? Mm. That's so cool. Hmm. The creating that space, the I line like looks. The lines. Yeah, I just want the lines to look a little cleaner, and they do. Making a bit of a reflection here, and let's think about that. You can use a T-square if these little lines are challenging to do. I would totally get it because I think they are too. The turntables really help me with that because I can always stroke to the <laughs> my strongest side. <laughs> Very happy about a traceable. Oh, so are we going to have some people do this, do we think? Oh, yeah, I think so, for sure. Lots of folks. They're Ideas of like having her kick her shoes off. There were lots of good ideas out here. Oh, that is a good idea, isn't that? Mm -hmm. There we go. We've got a little sparkles. Guys, I feel like, you know, we've kind of done a thing here. I do too. Do we feel like we've done a thing? Yeah. So I haven't, kicking the shoes off I love. I don't know. I could, I don't know, would they be flip-flops? What would they be? That's the other thing, too. What shoes are flying? That's right. Yeah, like, and then. Are they, you know, are they heels? Are they sneakers? Are they dress-up shoes? Are they casual shoes? Are they Crocs? I really doubt that they're Crocs. <laughs> 
nobody kicks their crocs off that's that's they don't do that sometimes i'll see something and be like oh that'd help a little bit yeah it's the weirdest thing you'll go through and you'll be like oh that'd help a little bit I like the sparkle do you very good ad It never hurts to take a minute and, um, you know, we always sort of speed along in our lessons and kind of try to get out for time. However, there are these little things that we can always do to help a piece find its resolution. Now, Tuesday is going to be our Lake Como do-over. It is not a short day. It's much longer than this. Mm. But it's really worth it because it's a very involved painting. I think I'm going to sign up the side of the bubble. I'm getting some of my white onto a detailed brush. this is what I mean like on mine I'm you know I'm gonna sign up the bubble I don't sign a big red signature off to the side right yeah. but I do put a signature somewhere in the painting so that we can see what it is gosh darn it now I see something I have to fix what do you gotta fix always after I sign I'm like oh It's adding that last little kind of highlight to a couple of the spots on her, on that dress, see? Mm -hmm. So it's a little haloed. Always. I always see one thing. One thing! And then I'll sit on it and be like, oh no! So what do you guys think? I love it. All right. I haven't gotten to see the chat in a minute because I've been focusing Oh my goodness, people came back. Oh yeah. <laughs> they were it's... like, all right, I guess she's doing something. So I love the ideas of flip-flops. Another thing that you could do that would be really spectacular, sparkle, fairy sparkles coming up mm. all through the bubbles would be amazing. You could put a dragon or a griffin in the sky. Yeah, you could back there in the distance. You could have doves flying through. There's or a bats. We forget bat bats. Bats. White bats. Monkeys, flying Mon monkeys. Flying monkeys. Flying monkeys are always a good choice. Hey, Staline. And then Angela's like one flip-flop. Oh, flying so through the air. Doing that thing. Hi, Collie Moochie. Now, before we go, I've got the bear stuff up. You guys want to see what happened with the bear? Got that for you. I mean, we've had such a day and y'all have hung in and you deserve a perk. You deserve a perk today. Mm. <laughs> Let's see here. I did not wear my fox mask correctly. By the did way, you, you can not? get that fox mask on my Teespring store with a discount code of TAS15 for 15% off. And there's a big pillow that I bought for my house. I got the extra big pillow. Ooh. And it's good. I can show you later. But let me show you the bear. Let's come over here for a minute. And we'll, let's see here. So let me get my bear video up. So first things first is we should show what happened to the, to, to, to it, right? Mm -hmm. So. Out in the front yard, we've got a... We didn't know there were bears. We didn't know there were bears. We've got an open top. Well, I guess it's a 10-yard trash receptacle. We're remodeling, and John had to tear out yeah. all the walls, and so... It's we, big. It's, it's big. It's, it's, it's this big blue thing. Big, big, and big. And so it was... And it's big enough that the bear was in it, and I couldn't see him down in it. So as <laughs> I was approaching, his head popped. And I was like, oh, hey there, Mr. Bear. And he was like, I'm not talking to you. And then he jumped over the edge. And you can see right here, kaboom. There's oh. this. Yeah. So he ran right into the door. And what you can't see very lightly is there's right in the middle of the front of the door is there's this brown streak. <laughs> and then, you should have gotten a better picture of the brown streak. Well, towards the back there, over the top, you can see where some other portion of him was smacked dented. him. And Bang, he left a nice big dent. <laughs> and he wasn't even being rude. He was just no. exiting in a normal way. He was. And 
I even I was like, hey, Mr. Bear, where's your insurance? And he was like, I'm not having it. He was just. <laughs> there he is. He was over there. See, he stopped to eat some of the apples off the tree. The crab apples, which we were wondering if were like edible crab apples or not edible crab apple. He did not stay for John. He when did John not was stay. Like, he just come see me. The bear was like, uh, no. Yeah, that he, was in our yard. He was he was just hanging out. Our outside. yard. <laughs> like that's the thing. <laughs> I was just like, I guess the dogs need to be on a leash now. No, this is not in Texas. No. This is in Pennsylvania. No, there's no Texas bears. I don't want to can no nobody in Houston freak out that there's a bear. Because <laughs> in Texas, if there was a bear on a loose, it just means that somebody got out of the zoo. And now, that would a, be on the news. Even now that would make the news. To further it, he was He's an uninsured so bear. He is an uninsured bear. He was he did not share his insurance with me. Mm -mm. And therefore the dent in my car is gonna stay. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> and he did he so there's all these little crab apples and we were trying That's to determine if this tree was even alive because we got here and it was still snowing in he april was, he was in that in in and that was all frozen we thought that was a dead tree but no apparently yeah. some of it's alive and he, he, he was back over here in this that's what you caught him doing here in the first of it he was he was actually over there eating crab apples that's what he was doing he just he was on his hind legs eating crab apples when i walked <laughs> when i caught him I think, I don't know. I think we'll have to do a bear painting at some he just, point. <laughs> he just decided to have a little stop. I could have done a bear painting today. I didn't even think of it. I like what we did today, We though. did. That looked I like that we just painted something. We just made something up from our heads and mm -hmm. just free painted it and hoped it all worked out in the end. And I think that it did. Kind of hard to figure out. Cause you you want to straighten up her things, but you shouldn't. She's swinging in. So this is actually the bottom. Ooh. That's, that's where the bottom actually is, I think. Gravity's pulling the hair down. Gravity's pulling. There it is. There it is. That's it. But it could also be flying back. So I could guess be. much like an abstract. We she could be anywhere. The, the wind goes. is determining the right way. The wind determines it. But I think I meant for it to be here. Here. I'll, I'll orient it that. Uh, is that Bruno? Our bear is now named Bruno. Thank you. Art with Emily says, please say my name. I've said it, but don't say sub to my channel because that's rude. <laughs> Can I see the um, red fox? Oh, yeah. Hold on a second. <laughs> YouTube etiquette. All right. So here's the thing. I treated myself to this, and I just want to show this to you guys. This is my new big pillow. I got the oversized pillow, and then it's got my own face on the back just to mess with the kids. <laughs> But it is overstuffed. Nice pillow. And if you're wondering where is this, all you have to do is cl click any of the Fox products on the Teespring store and all the products will pull up. And then now that's what the mask was for. Is it? And then I have a mug and a mask. See, I had a plan. A mug and a mask and it was a plan. See, now my ma well, I can't wear a mask. Just, uh, just a second here. I'm going to put something I want something the up. eyes to show. You can arrange it so the eyes show. There you go. The mug. I mean, if I've got to wear one, I want to at least be like catchy, catchy. You can do any color you want in the background. I just liked the brown with the brown. I just liked it because I thought it was, you know, and I'm going to put it on a sofa somewhere, I think. Probably upstairs in our bedroom. Mm -hmm. It's the first pillow I've treated myself to. So, that's a trash panda. John likes a trash panda. I, could, so I, I really like that. Isn't that cute? I like that one. This is the oversized ones. They have them in different sizes. And again, just so that you guys get a break on shipping, it's TAS15. That's a link that as long as Teespring, I put no expiration on that link, and Teespring didn't make me put one on there. So I think it's a good discount as long as I have a Teespring store. There Did you I go. lose my puffy? I didn't lose my puffy. Puffy down? No, there's there. Uh, did I do a zip up hoodie in the gnome design? I did a zip up hoodie in two designs. I don't remember what they were. I really like my Teespring store. It's kind of like, uh, I pretend I'm a fashion designer. It's <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> yes. This is how we all feel. I have decided I've done, I'm going to do a thing. I dedicate this painting to every subscriber on my channel. Hey. I dedicate this to you guys. From my imagination and your imagination together, we made something 
it's i think couldn't be more this channel <laughs> mm -hmm. I agree. this painting i think this sums up my channel be good to yourself be good to each other. And I'll see you Tuesday to make up Lake Como. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>